What is going on everybody? My name is Jay and this is the very first episode of Sloppy Lab Work. Sloppy Lab Work is a segment provided by the Wild Wormhole where what we're gonna do is exactly that, give you a sloppy analysis of deck lists, whether they're our own personal deck lists. Sometimes we might ask for um, viewers or listeners to submit deck lists they want us to analyze. But basically what these are are little mini episodes in between podcasts that we're going to post to our YouTube channel, post to our podcast feed that you guys can listen to while you're waiting for the podcast episodes to come out. These are going to, majority of the time, probably going to be just one of us at a time. Sometimes we might pair up and do one or something like that on a deck that we all really like or something like that. But most of the time it's going to be just one of us, either me, Mike or D House recording this. And we're gonna put out as many as we can. I'm really excited. I think these are gonna be fun to do. We're gonna try to keep them pretty short for you guys since it's just one deck and it's a deck that you probably won't even be able to play except on uh, the Crucible. But what we wanna give you is the ability to kind of look at a deck list for the first time, pick apart some of the combos that that deck probably has. Cause like in the limited format or the, um, you know, buy a pack or buy a deck and play um, sealed events, you kind of need to be able to figure out what your deck does before you play it. So I think this will be a good way to train that part of the strategy of Keyforge. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited. So I'm gonna start with mine. It is Heaven Springlow Miner, if you wanna look it up on the app so you can follow along with me. That is Heaven, H-E-A-V-E-N, comma, Springlow, S-P-R-I-N-G-L-O-W, Miner, M-I-N-E-R. And if possible, we'll uh, link that into the description of the video or the podcast feed so you guys can just click on it. If not, you can search for it in the uh, Keyforge app. So this is a Brobnar Shadows Untamed deck. And right away, you can see, we're gonna, we're gonna start with Brobnar. This is my personal deck. I don't know if I already said that. I really like this deck. This is one of my favorite decks that I have. I've played it like four or five times, so I've I kind of have figured out some of the combos that it has and uh, the kind of play style that this deck has, but I, I really like it. And as soon as I opened it and played it, I knew that this was gonna be one of my favorite decks. It's not even super great, but it's fun to play. And it's it feels unique. I guess they all feel unique, but it feels really unique to me because it's got some cards in here that are pretty rare and um, so let's, let's, let's just go ahead and dive in. So Brobnar, right off the bat, you see a Coward's End and Loot the Body. So this is a really sick combo that you can do by, by itself. Um, if you have no board presence, even if you have a little board presence, but your opponent has way more than you, you play that Loot the Bodies and the Coward's End. Loot the Bodies is play for the remainder of the turn. You gain one each time an enemy creature is destroyed. It doesn't even have to be from a fight. And the Coward's End is gain, uh, play, destroy each undamaged creature, gain three chains. So that combo is really good, but even without playing them together, Coward's End is a really good way to wipe the board before you play your creatures. And then Loot the Bodies is a really good way to get extra Amber when you fight with big creatures. And you can see this is Brobnar and Untamed, so you're gonna have plenty of creatures. Next up is Punch. It's good because it gives you an amber. You have to get that amber generation and it does three damage to a creature. So it helps you um, get rid of some of those elusive guys from uh, both this and shadows that are really, really annoying. Like the ones that are steel and amber as an action, but it's got elusive, so you can't, you have to attack it twice before you destroy it, all that kind of stuff. This, this card helps you get around that kind of stuff and it helps you kill bigger creatures with smaller creatures. So I like that card. Next up is one that I actually really, really love. It's called Trimmer. Play, stun a creature in each of its neighbors. This really comes in clutch when your opponent has some really dominant creatures on the board, especially some of them big Mars guys or big Sanctum guys that have tons of armor. Uh, this, this helps take care of that. It also takes care of, I mean, not even big creatures. Like if you want to stun some shadows guys so they can't stop stealing all your stuff. So Tremor is a really good card. Uh, Unguarded Camp. This one's not my favorite in the deck. It's a play for each creature you have ex in excess of your opponent. A friendly creature captures one amber. Each creature cannot capture more than one amber this way. It's good. It's good. I like it. 
and I've played it once or twice and in this deck you're gonna have a lot of creatures on the board so most of the time you have the ability to capture a lot of amber with this but over the four or five games I've played I've only played it once and captured like one maybe two amber I might have just drawn it at the wrong time in every game or something like that but uh I mean it, it's decent it's not the best card in the world to me though the next one is really important for the strategy of this deck though it's gauntlet of command it's a artifact action ready and fight with this creature i mean that's that's just brobnar right there so i I'm, I'm a huge fan of this this card next one is a really good one too it's omni uh artifact omni means you can use it on any house that you call uh sacrifice screech bomb your opponent loses to amber if you get it early you play it and now you just always have a way to keep your opponent off of a key if they have seven amber or less so six or seven and uh that's on top of like if you have unguarded camp and you can use that or other ways that you have to steal or uh disrupt your opponent's amber war chest this is a really good card action gain an amber for each enemy creature that was destroyed in a fight this turn so you pair war chest with gauntlet of command it's an artifact by the way with Gauntlet of Command that lets you fight and loot the bodies, that's two amber every time you destroy a creature while fighting. Like if you can fight and kill three things, that's six amber right there, that's a key. I don't know, I really, I really like this uh, Brobnar package of kill things, get amber. Uh, so, but one problem is I only have four Brobnar guys. Uh, those are the four cards left in Brobnar, but they're good ones. So you got Fire Spitter, uh, five uh, five power one armor before fight deal one damage to each creature that's really good I like that because there's a lot of small creatures with elusive and low health that uh, this really helps to destroy so if you can fight with him twice you can kill a lot of really good small creatures with just his passive you got headhunter uh, fight gain an amber I love that especially if you're fighting small creatures and you keep them alive for two fights it's like you um, fight with him well you play loot the bodies or have war chest out there or something along those lines uh you play loot the bodies you fight with headhunter you gauntlet the command get them ready fight them again that's like four amber right there at least it could be way more than that if you have loot the bodies and you kill two things that's like six amber right there fighting with that guy twice that's that's just wild so that's a cool combo lumiere flame fist is another way um to keep your opponent from forging a key it's five power play if your opponent has seven or more they lose two i really love the artwork on this card too he's he's totally awesome and he looks cool uh so say you have screech bomb out there or you don't have screech bomb out there and the guy has your opponent has seven amber you play this they go down can't forge key or you combo them together and make them lose two with screech bomb and then play or no you play lumiere flame fist first make them lose two then screech bomb make them lose two more that's four hammer right there they just lost that turn that's and that's a lot that's that's pretty significant and the last creature that i have is a really really cool one it's rock curling giant he's a rare uh he has six power during your turn each time you discard a broadmar card from your hand you may deal four damage to a creature so that is really really solid uh four good creatures to fight with so with all these fight things that i have in this deck i have to have more than four creatures to fight with so where do where do my creatures come from let's go over to untamed we'll start at the bottom you got niffle ape he's not great but he ignores elusive and uh taunt isn't quite as important but ignoring elusive is really good because there's so many annoying creatures that have elusive so there's one creature he got murmok uh or murmook sorry he's not really a fight creature but it is a body and he makes your opponent's uh, keys cost four both of those are three power flaxia he's all she's only four power but uh you gain two if you control more creatures than your opponent um right now you can't really see how that's uh really super possible but you'll see in a minute more more times than not you're gonna get the two amber off this person and it's a four creature that you use to fight uh witch of the wilds another four power creature um during each turn in which untamed is not your active house you may play one untamed card this is a rare and this is a really strong one because say you play shadows or brobnar whatever 
you could still play an untamed card from your hand. That is so in this in this game that is so awesome. All of the best cards are the cards that are like uh, play a card from another house, use a creature from another house, use an artifact from another house, or you, wild wormhole, play the top card of your deck. Oh, it's another house, and I still get to use it. That's awesome. And those are some of the best cards. I really like Witch of the Wilds. And then we get to the next part. We got Bear Flute. It's a rare. If you don't know what Bear Flute is, it's an action, fully heal an ancient bear. Okay, whatever. If there are no ancient bears in play, though, you get to search your deck and discard pile and put each ancient bear from your deck or your discard pile into your hand. If you do, you shuffle the discard pile into your deck. Oh, man. And guess what? I got three ancient bears. So essentially, if I don't have an ancient bear in play, I use this. I get to get all three of my ancient bears. And since I'm already using untamed as my house, I get to play all three of those ancient bears. So in the mulligan, I always mulligan for bear flute. If I don't start with it, I mulligan to get it because turn one, if I can get this out the next turn, I'm gonna have three ancient bears to play, which is huge board presence. Ancient bear is a five power assault two. Before this creature attacks, deal two damage to the attacked enemy. So if you're dealing damage to this, ignores elusive, which is awesome. There's so many two power creatures that have elusive, tons of them. This creature is way better than he's been given credit for. He's not good just by himself, but if you have three ancient bears and bear flute, that's really, really good. So he's got assault two to get past elusive and he's got five power. So he does seven damage, even if you're not fighting a small creature, which is a lot and he has the ability to get through elusive. So getting three of these out turn two is huge. And as soon as they're all dead, you just bear flute, get them all back, play them again. That is just insanity to me. I think that's really, really strong. Uh, next up, we got Ritual of Balance. It is a artifact action. If your opponent has six or more, steal it. Just another sweet way to keep your opponent off the key and it steals, which is really, really good to me. Uh, steel is one of the strongest powers in the game that you can use, so that's exciting. Vigor, which is play, heal up to three damage from a creature. If you heal three damage, gain one, but it also gives you an amber, so that's sweet. Uh, you have a chance of getting two amber from one card and healing your own character or, or your opponents. Sometimes it's worth healing three damage from your opponent to get, to get that extra amber. Fog Bank, your opponent cannot use creatures to fight on their next turn, and it gives you an amber. Another really good card, and these are all cards that you can use with Witch of the Wild to play on a, your off turn. And the last one is another rare, Curiosity, uh, gain an amber, and play destroy each scientist creature. Now it's really it feels really specific, especially for a rare. But uh, Mars has science creatures, Logos has scientist creatures. Um, I don't think any others do, but if you're playing against either of those houses, it just absolutely destroys it. And the good thing is I don't have any scientist creatures in my deck, so I'm not going to be targeting my own people. So I mean, it's not the greatest card, but at minimum it gives you an amber. Now let's get on over to shadows. Bait and switch. Play if your opponent has more amber than you, steal one, repeat this card's effect if your opponent still has more amber than you. Holy cow, that is really good. Bait and Switch is one of the more oppressive uh, cards in the game. And now I have it in this deck that I already absolutely love. To go with that, I have too much to protect, which is gain an amber, steal all but six of your opponent's amber. So another way to get amber from them. Uh, key of Darkness, which is a rare. Forge a key at plus six current cost. If your opponent has no amber, forge a key at plus two current cost. Um, so I have tons of ways to steal amber in this deck or capture amber in this deck Which helps me to get it to where I can forge a key at plus two, which is really really solid and Forging a key out of turn is really strong, but I do have to say I've pulled key of darkness off Way less than I've pulled off something like key charge I'm not exactly sure why but uh, I haven't actually pulled off key, key of darkness in this deck yet I'm gonna try and mess around and see if I'm just playing my deck wrong or 
or what have you, but uh, I'm going to give it more time before I decide whether a key of darkness is good for this deck or not. I have plenty of ways to capture and steal, so I should be able to get them down to zero. The next rare I have is Customs Office. Your opponent must pay you one amber in order to play an artifact. This is so solid. Such a good card. Because it's essentially your opponent doesn't play artifacts. Like, I think I've had one person pay me an amber to play an artifact and it was a dominator bobble once every other game i've played they've just always discarded their artifacts because they just feel like it's not worth it whatsoever so i really like this one this one is sweet especially against an artifact heavy deck uh, it gives me a way to destroy you know or to to combat against artifact heavy decks that are really strong i got two more artifacts right here the both special delivery Gives you an Amber, and then Omni, Sacrifice, Special Delivery, deal 3 damage to a flank. If it destroys it, purge it. Uh, another sweet way, I have tons of direct damage in this deck, and uh, tons of creatures to do damage. So if, if you get both of these out, you got a punch in hand, you're doing tons of direct damage. Plus you got Ancient Bears out there with uh, Assault, and you got the flame, Fire Spitter that does uh, AoE damage, all that kind of stuff. You, you have ways to get you have plenty of ways to get elusive creatures off off the board in this deck, that is for sure. Uh, another one is Nexus, three power creature, elusive. Reap, use an opponent's artifact as if it were yours. I like that one, I like it a lot. Especially some of the ones are like one-time things, you have to sacrifice them. Um, potion of invulnerability, all that kind of stuff. Even if it doesn't help you, it's, it's nice to get it off your opponent's board. So that's sweet. Uh, next up, two Silver Tooths. Two of my favorite creatures in the game. Silver Tooth is a two power creature that comes in ready. He enters play ready. He's not, in, he doesn't have elusive, skirmish, or anything like that. So he's not a fighting creature. It's essentially a creature that you play and you reap with <laughs> more times than not. So I really like having two Silver Tooths to get some quick amber. I have uh, Umbra, two, uh, another two power, skirmish, fight, steal an amber. Skirmish is when you fight, you're not dealt damage in return. So you can just keep fighting with this guy, doing two damage, stealing Amber. So that's really good. And then two Urchins. It's a one power creature, elusive, and play Steal and Amber. So I have tons of ways of stealing Amber. Plenty, especially in my shadows. Because in shadows alone, I have bait and switch, too much to protect. Customs office, it's not really stealing, but uh, it gets me stuff. And two Urchins and an Umbra. Whew. Uh, so, what are some of the best um, combos in the deck? Cowards End, Loot the Bodies, solid combo. Loot the Bodies plus Gauntlet of Command and uh, the War Chest, really strong combo right there. I've got three Ancient Bears I can get out, plus a uh, Fire Spitter, Headhunter, Lumiere, Rock Curling Giant. I've got plenty of guys to get out to fight with. And this deck has a really strong board presence. You want to get bear flute early though. If you don't get bear flute early, it's really hard to uh, keep that presence on the board. But if you don't, it's it, I mean it's still possible. But if you get bear flute early, you getting those ancient bears out, all three of them whenever you want. It's so sick. It's such a good such a good card. And then you just fight like crazy. You got them to command, fight some more. You uh, punch you special delivery with the loot the bodies and war chest you get tons of amber from fighting then you got bait and switch if your opponent just completely is just obliterating you in amber generation you got your bait and switch you got you got you too much to protect all that kind of stuff so i hope you guys enjoyed this this was the first try at doing this it was fun i hope you guys like the list i hope you guys enjoy the future segments of sloppy lab work thank you so much for tuning in i really appreciate it and as always we'll catch you guys in the next episode bye bye